All right, everyone. Uh, well, first we're going to start with introductions. So um, I'm going to let my colleagues go first because then I'll launch into telling you all a little bit about this program. Okay. So for those of you that don't know me, I'm Dr. Rachel Walker. I'm a licensed psychologist and certified mental performance consultant, and I am the director of psychological health and performance. Right. My name is Chris Thomas. I am our clinical data and administrative specialist in PHP. And my name is Dr. Mac Brown. I am also a licensed clinical psychologist and certified mental performance consultant. And I'm the assistant director and training coordinator at PHP. And thank you so much for, for joining us and tuning in. Um, this is the first inaugural uh, Training Thursdays, which is a link to our Mental Lift Mondays. So that was something that was sent out via email on Monday that had a document with some helpful tips about our topic for today. Um, and then we also have an Instagram that we are also pushing out some tips on, on Wednesdays. Um, so we'll also have information in those men Monday messages about how to follow us on Instagram for those as well. Um, so each week, any, of, any questions that you might have about the topic or the exercise or skill that we're going over in this video, um, if you want to email me um, and ask any questions, the following week we will go over um, answers to any questions. So um, this is my email address. Oh, oh the back. there we go. I got to I got to stay in the background. <laughs> so it's. I also Mac. just sent it in the chat. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. um, and if anyone's looking at the recording afterwards, it's Mac M A C period Brown at Colorado edu. So feel free to email me. And then on the following week, um, we will answer any questions that get sent to me um, on our topic. So for this week's topic, the subject matter was tips for managing uncertainty. Um, and that is definitely something that we are all living with currently. Um, but that's also something that we go through in day-to-day -day life when we're not in a global pandemic. Um, so we figured that one of the ways that we were gonna start off this uh, video chat was by starting with a metaphor. So I'm gonna hand it over to Rachel to share a metaphor that kind of reflects current uncertain times and lead us into how we can navigate those. So Rachel, okay. if you wanna take that away. So one of the things you probably don't know about me is that I enjoy using metaphors in addition to the skills that we'll be providing each week. So this week we thought the topic lended itself nicely to this particular metaphor. It's called the sky and the weather metaphor. So you are like the sky. The thoughts and feelings are like the weather. The weather changes continually, but no matter how bad it gets, it cannot harm the sky in any way. The mightiest thunderstorm, the most turbulent hurricane, the most severe winter blizzard, these things cannot harm or hurt the sky. And no matter how bad the weather gets, the sky always has room for it. And sooner or later, the weather always changes. Now, sometimes we forget the sky is even there, but it's still there. And sometimes we can't see the sky. It's obscured by the clouds. But if we rise high enough above those clouds, even the thickest, darkest thunderclouds, sooner or later we'll reach clear sky. Just like if you were in a plane above the clouds, stretching in all directions, boundless and pure. More and more, you can learn how to access this part of you, a safe space inside from which to observe and make room for difficult thoughts and feelings. And as we progress each week, we hope to, with the different topics and skills, teach you different ways to allow that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we thought that this was a, a great tie-in to the idea of what it's like to deal with uncertainty and how when that's happening, there are a lot of thoughts that might be arising for us. There are a lot of feelings that can coincide with what those thoughts are. And, you know, the situation with COVID-19 is like that in this metaphor is essentially the thunderstorm or the hurricane or whatever you want to, whatever, you know, natural weather situation might be happening in the sky. And right now, 
you know, at various points that might feel more prominent in the sky for us than at others. Um, and ultimately it is going to clear its path. The sky is still gonna be there. Um, we're all still gonna be here um, doing the work that we love, um, engaging in sports that we love and all those things. So um, Chris is gonna lead us through a couple of questions for both myself and Rachel on how to navigate these uncertain times and these thunderclouds. Um, and then we'll go from there. So Chris, do you wanna lead us into our first question? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's a big one and it's just kind of basically what advice do you have for the athletes and for staff members that are working from home during this time? Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll kick this one off to start. Um, one of the tips on our sheet that came out on Monday um, was about having some kind of routine and having a plan. And so I think my biggest advice for folks that are working at home or for athletes that are now at home and not in their typical schedules with classes and with practices and is to try and find any way that you can um, within the current guidelines that will help you maintain that routine. So for example, I would always walk to work with mass transit and I realized that not having that in part of my routine made it hard for me to start my work day. So I started waking up in the morning and going for walks around the neighborhood as a way to kind of recreate that routine. So if there are small ways that you can recreate routines that provide that sense of normalcy, that'll help give you an anchor during these uncertain waters. Yeah, I think that's great. I think the other couple things I might add to that are, um, you know, I've seen a couple of memes out there around like Zoom meetings and how you dress from on the top versus the bottom um, and what people see. I think dressing for, you know, the the social life that you want. So dressing for success, even if it is day in and day out, you know, you're in the same environment. Um, I think the other piece to it is setting up your work environment. So for students, the athletes that are at home and also now pretty much the majority of the staff working from home, trying to have a set place where you are doing the work. So if you have a desk, that's great. If you don't have a, have a desk, that's okay, um, but just trying to make sure that like if, you're, if your workspace is set up at the dining room table, that that's the space that you do it. What you don't wanna do is um, do work in places where you normally would be relaxing. Um, so for instance, you don't wanna do your work in your bed because you want your bed to be associated with sleep. Um, I think the other piece to it is getting outside, right? Within the um, constraints that we've been given and the recommendations for the stay at home order. So, you know, that can look like just, you know, stepping outside on your front porch and putting your face to the sun and spending a few mindful moments there or walking around the block and, and getting some exercise. So the other piece to it is making sure you also stay with your exercise routine. That can look a little different. I know our sports med team has been putting up different programs on social media, which is awesome. Um, and, you know, I would say also in these times when we're kind of, it can feel like we're stuck at home, right? Um, so trying different things, trying new things, um, whether it's, you know, working on a puzzle. I don't know that, <laughs> I'm not huge on puzzles, but maybe that's something that, you know, you might wanna try. It could also be a mindful exercise to do that. It could be reading, um, reading a book for fun. Um, and then, you know, maybe playing cards, maybe playing games with people in your household um, where there's that connection. And we'll talk more about the difference between um, physical distancing and social distancing and, and what we want to do in these times as far as social connection. Yep. Yeah, that'll be a, a topic that comes up actually next week. Um, so we'll get more to that at the end. Uh, Chris, I think you have another question for us. Yeah, I do. And it's um, in reference to the handout that we sent out on Monday, um, kind of going around the refocusing of thoughts. And what suggestions would you make um, as to how someone could go about doing that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of 
thoughts might be percolating through everyone's minds as far as, you know, when am I going to be able to get back to my normal routine? When am I going to be able to see people again in person and resume life the way it had been previously? And it's really about shifting your thoughts towards something that's going to be helpful and give you a sense of control in the here and now. And one quick way that you can do that is focusing your mind on how will I, and using that phrase as a starting point. So how will I take advantage of this current circumstances and try and optimize with what I can right now? Um, or another example might be like, how will I take care of myself during a global pandemic? What is that gonna look like? What do I need that to look like for myself? So really just targeting whatever thoughts are there and worries and concerns, just gently reframing it towards what tangibly are you able to do and framing it in that thought process of how will I, because then that can give you control back. And that was one of our self-care tips on Instagram was that um, self-care is you being able to take power back and get your power back. Yeah, the other strategy that I might add to that, um, so I like to work with the thoughts, um, just similar to the question. So the question strategy. So instead of fighting against the thought, so say for instance, you have the thought, like this is never gonna end. Um, that probably isn't gonna be so helpful for any anxious feelings or worries that you may have in the moment. And so one way to create a little bit of space from that thought, um, and then be able to engage in things that are helpful in this time, whether it's thoughts or actions, um, is to say to yourself, I notice I'm having the thought that this is never gonna end. And so it creates a little bit of uh, kind of that observer perspective on that thought that creates a little bit of space to allow you to re-engage in thoughts that are helpful and then actions that would be helpful. So I know- um, time. We Do we want to transition to next week, Mac? Yep, yeah, we had had one other question around self-care, but we kind of were already weaving that in as we were talking. So Rachel had already alluded to the idea that while the current um, recommendations are around social distancing, um, I think a maybe more helpful way to think about it is that we're really trying to create physical distance from other people in order to um, diminish the transmission of COVID-19. But we don't wanna get into a mentality that we're socially disconnecting from others. If anything else, that's something that we need more than ever now during these tough times. And so that's gonna be our topic next week is about how to connect with people um, during this situation. So stay tuned on Monday for that email. And then next Thursday, we'll talk more on that topic as well as provide some tips and strategies around how to do that. And uh, Rachel's gonna close us out with a quote that's related to the topic of uncertainty. Because we love quotes so much, hope <laughs> can um, connect to the topic and also um, provide some inspiration. So embrace uncertainty. Some of the most beautiful chapters in our lives won't have a title until much later. Yeah. Well, thanks everyone for joining us and for future watchers that can benefit from our training Thursday clips. And we look forward to talking with you next week. Feel free to email me those questions if you have any about this topic and we'll see you next time. Bye.